Shemuel Shani, 2 Samuel 18. And David numbered at the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of Eth, the people, under the hand of Yoav, and a third part under the hand of Avishai, the son of Seruyah, Yoav's brother, and a third part under the hand of Itai the Giti. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, You shall not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die will they care for us. But now you are worth ten thousand of us, therefore now it is better that you help us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seems you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Eth Yoav and Eth Avishai and Eth Itai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Avshalom. And all the people heard when the king gave Eth all the captain's charge concerning Avshalom. So the people went out into the field against Yashar'el, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Yashar'el were slain before the servants of David. And there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. And... Avshalom met the servants of David, and Avshalom rode upon a mule. And the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heavens and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it, and told Yoav, and said, Behold, I saw Eth Avshalom hanged in an, in an oak. And Yoav said unto the man that told him, And behold, you saw him, and why did you not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a belt. And the man said unto Yoav, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son? For in our hearing the king charged you and Eth Avishai, and Ethitai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man, Avshalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against my own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Then said Yoav, I may not tarry thus with you. And he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Avshalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bore Yoav's armor compassed about and smote Eth of Shalom and slew him. And Yoav blew the shofar, and the people returned from pursuing after Yashara'el. For Yoav held back Eth the people. And they took Eth of Shalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all Yashara'el fled, every one to his tent. Now Avshalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself Eth a pillar, which is in the king's valley. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Avshalom's place. Then said Ahimaatz, the son of Sedach, Let me now run and bear at the king's tidings, rather the king tidings, how that Yahuwah has avenged him of his enemies. And Yoav said unto him, You shall not bear tidings this day, but you shall bear tidings another day. But this day you shall bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. 
Then said Yoav to Cushi, Go tell the king what you have seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Yoav and ran. Then said Ahimaatz, the son of Sedach, yet again to Yoav, But howsoever let me, I pray you, also run after Cushi. And Yoav said, Wherefore will you run, my son, seeing that you have no tidings ready? But howsoever said he, Let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaatz ran by the way of the plain, and overran Eth Cushi. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate, unto the wall, and lifted up Eth his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings tidings. And the watchman said, Methinks at the running of the foremost is like the running of Aki Ma'atz, the son of Sedach. And the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. And Aki Ma'atz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be Yahuwah, Eloheka, which has delivered up at the men that lifted up at their hand against my lord, the king. And the king said, Is the man, rather, is the young man of Shalom safe? And Ahi Ma'atz answered, When Yoav sent at the king's servant, and me at your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushi came, and Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for Yahuwah has avenged you this day of all them that rose up against you. And the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Avshalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against you to do you hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Avshalom, my son, my son Avshalom, would to Elohim I had died for you, O oh, Avshalom, my son, my son.